Good morning and welcome back out to Patman Garage. Uh, we're going to start in on the uh, cam solenoids part of doing this F-150. Um, so it shouldn't be that big of a deal, but uh, we're, we'll get the valve covers pulled off and uh, show you all what's going on under, underneath it. So this particular truck is a 2015 uh, 5 liter and we are going to replace the cam solenoids which live under these connectors and they're in the valve covers, uh, under the valve covers, so we'll have to pull valve covers off. Um, so before we do that, we'll have to pull the coils off and kind of relocate some of the breather hoses and a couple little things to get in there. Uh, I'll probably go ahead and pull the intake tube off just to get a little bit more space to work and uh, we'll get to it. All right, so you got to squeeze this black tab to remove this vent hose and it should come right off. And then this guy, uh, there's a plastic tab underneath. That's the motion you're doing is down to get out of that hook and then away from it to open it looser. lift up like that so I grab a fingernail underneath it and pull up on it and then you can squeeze it and lift the whole connector um, so in my original video of doing spark plugs on a different truck I just left the coils hanging like this so I didn't have to deal with the connectors given that I got to pull the whole valve cover off I'm probably gonna go ahead and pull these just so I don't have to deal with the the bulk of the coil sitting there all right, so I pulled the coil connectors off, and I went ahead and pulled the injector connectors as well, just so I get the harness out of the way over here. Then we're going to swap to a 10 millimeter on the ratchet, and then we're going to pull the valve cover bolts. Okay, so I got the two uh, solenoids pulled off of this side. This is going to be your intake. This is going to be your exhaust side. Um, so they come pretty much straight out. They're, they're not bad at all. Um, one thing to, to check while you have this apart is just gently push on the, the end of the uh, adjuster itself. Make sure that spring is moving freely on both of them. Make sure they're not bound up or anything because you you know you don't want to go into to taking this whole thing apart and then find out that there's something else going on with it. Why your uh, the VCT solenoids are not pressing that pin forward correctly. Uh, so the the I got my two removed here, and then my new ones. They're all the same. They came out of this uh, Ford Perform Ford Performance set. Um, it's actually the cheapest way you can buy them, and these are the upgraded parts. So uh, we'll get these out of the Ziplocs and get them installed. And I'll show you real quick on the on the new ones. So on the New one, the solenoid pin is, uh, should be moving freely, um, and that's just the weight of itself moving there. Um, so when you put this in, when you bolt this in, you got to make sure that this guy stays back because you don't want to bind up on the front of that camshaft going in. You'll either bend this pin or you'll damage the uh, camshaft actuator, one of the two. Uh, so be really, really, really careful of that. If you have a really skinny screwdriver, you can kind of wedge it down in there and help make sure that pin stays back. Uh, the bolts stay encapsulated because of that little plastic spacer dude. Uh, that will have to get moved up. See my old ones are at the top of the threads. So it's a good idea to go ahead and move those. So like I said, these, these guys just literally slide right up. No big deal there. And then you want to make sure that pin stays deployed back and then you're going to just set it in the hole and there is a alignment pin over here on this guy this hole is going to line up there's a little black stem that sticks up on each side um, so make sure that that guy that's also helps make sure you don't put them in backwards somehow but um, just all the things you're looking for so you're just going to set this guy in here like that and then when you start to, well, I missed a hole. There you go. Um, 
So as you start to tighten it down, like I said, keep an eye on that pin and make sure the pin hasn't fallen out. And the torque spec on these that I found is 11 foot pounds, which is pretty close to what it was when I removed them. Um, so that's what I plan to torque them back to. And finally, we're gonna get the valve cover reinstalled. So I got new seals for it. Um, you can also buy a whole entire valve cover. They're kind of expensive for what they are. Um, so these are my two valve covers. One is uh, same part number dash B, and the other one is dash A. So I assume that the A is gonna be my driver's side, so we'll pop this guy open and test it out. Um, also wanted to make a point of showing you the joint, the three-way joint between the uh, timing cover, the cylinder head, and then the valve cover um, right here. That That is the seal. It's on the, the timing cover, and it actually sticks up just a little bit. Uh, so when you're scraping, try to go around that guy, and then set thing down here at the bottom. Um, um, there. A little bit of a seal sticking up. Um, and then you just need to put a, a little dollop of uh, RTV around those. And that'll just help make sure everything seals up nice whenever you have kind of different layers touching each other and different angles and different expansion temperatures and all that. So a little dollop of RTV and then we'll set this valve cover back on there. And again, watch out for your harness going back in it too. Make sure this is up in the high out of the way and we'll get this thing back in. All right, so what you're looking for on the valve cover gasket itself is these two little openings that have uh, in the gasket face. And those are going to go where that timing cover sticks up through it, like I showed you earlier. And then the gasket itself is going to have, uh, around that area, you're going to have one side that's going to be deeper, has a thicker wall. One side has got a thinner wall. And that corresponds, you can see right here on the, the valve cover itself, you get a, a deeper spot on one side and a thinner spot on the other side. Um, so you're just going to lay, that, lay those in there first, and then make sure you... The routing makes makes the the bend in the gasket makes sense on the the routing there, and then the rest of this will just pop in place, and you just kind of pop it down with a finger, and it'll wedge itself in place. Like that. Now, when you go back on with it, make sure you kind of are. When you set it down on the on the head, make sure that there's no uh, gaps. You can take a small mirror and look around it. Um, just pay attention as you go on. It should feel nice and flush going on. If you feel like it's kind of got a little bit of a wobble or a weird spot to it, then maybe it didn't sit, sit, get seated properly. And there are on the harness on both sides of the valve cover, there are two uh, of these well, not this guy, but Christmas tree clips that plug down onto the back of the valve cover, and they are really difficult to get to. Uh, so just FYI on those, you're going to you're gonna hate life trying to pull those off. Um, if you really can't get back there easily, you can actually pick up the valve cover and pull it towards you just slightly and get a little bit more space back there, and you can feel them a little bit easier at that point, and then you can pop them off with your trim tool. Um, and then the ground strap is going to go on the bottom corner on both sides. Uh, there's a stud down there. Let's see if I can get down in there and show you. So, there's the stud. And the ground wire just sits on top of that guy uh, with a nut, 8 millimeter nut. So, all the valve cover bolts are going to be 10 millimeters. And then the, the nut part back there is going to be in a 8 millimeter. And then the passenger side has another ground here. And I went ahead and pulled the, this is a 10 millimeter. I pulled the ground off for here. I unplugged the throttle body and I unplugged the perch valve. And that just gave me enough more slack to pull that harness up higher and get it out of the way. So real quick, I want to talk about this, uh, the boot that sits inside uh, that seals against the coil tower. Uh, I had one of these that stayed on the coil tower. It was the back one on the passenger side. Um, so I had to pry it off of the coil tower. And then what I did, I just laid the valve cover down on the ground. And uh, 
made this tool with a it's a 32 millimeter oil socket a six inch extension and then a uh, adapter to make it a little bit bigger i basically just you coat top down um with the seal and i just kind of bumped it a couple times with my hand to uh, get it to fall back in place um, so don't freak out if that happens in your case um, also was going to talk about the valve cover situation on passenger side with the heater hoses here um this is your first time doing this job um it's gonna suck and there's, <laughs> there's no good way to do it but basically you kind of have to take the back of the valve cover and come up with it and of course the valve cover is under this hose here so you have to kind of go up and around that way with it i got an oil cap it's gonna be the front side got all my seals on um i did want to shoot a little bit of glass cleaner on some of these seals just to make it they go on a little smoother. And I come in. So you get to this point when you get to this point you kind of have to pull up on the heater hoses get the oil cap and you got to watch your uh, PCV connection there Ugh. that's probably the hardest part is getting around that guy then we'll swing this in place um, you still have to lift up quite a bit on heater hoses and uh, get it to get over the top of our solenoids here and we definitely don't want to break our brand new solenoids off um, so when I came off with it I kind of did one and then I did the other like that so that was the first one and then of course the ground strap Okay, now I'm going to feel along the bottom and make sure my gasket didn't get rolled off of it because we kind of snug up, you know, hung up on a lot of things going down. And that's it. So it takes a little bit of a little bit of down pressure on it to get all those seals to seat down. And then we'll go through and start starting the bolts and snugging them down. Excellent. All right. So now we can get these guys torqued down.
And last but not least, the back one is a stud versus an bolt. Is this where the ground strap gets attached? Didn't quite get that one down. That's better. Okay. So, following that, we'll put coils back in. We will start installing the harness, uh, plug in all the injectors, then clip it down, and then we'll plug in the coils. Um, okay, last and final tip while I wrap, wrap up on this video here, plugging this guy in and it's kind of, kind of stiff going on like that. Like I'm, I'm, I'm squeezing that pretty good and it's, it's not actually seating. Um, what happens is there's a lot of dirt and debris that gets lodged in these, in the connectors themselves that, uh, actually you can see a little bit there on the inside of that guy. Um, what happens is those connectors and those seals get really dry. So again, if you take your connector, let me get this to stay up right here, and I just hit it with just one little, like that, of glass cleaner. Uh, we're just gonna lubricate that seal. It's deep down inside that connector as it goes in and we should be in a position now where it just clips on nice and easily. So you can see we're actually retained now. Didn't actually hear the click sound, but um, that's kind of the idea there. All right, we got the engine bay all wrapped back up, put everything back on it, and we'll give it a test fire and see how we do. She already sounds a lot happier at idle, even cold start idle, she sounds a lot better. So we're gonna get wrapped up on this truck. We'll take it for a quick spin and, and uh, make sure there's no any issues. Doesn't have any issues with it, but uh, should be pretty simple. And like I said, I, I appreciate you watching another video of mine and I will catch you in the next one.